and then I, I don't know, before we, we get on to today's task, maybe we can, we can quickly showcase how you can, you can organize, or how can is it deposit things in bulk? Just quickly to showcase how this can be done. In the event that you find yourselves doing this. So, um, unless if there are questions based on the statistics, maybe and the mistakes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the one of the things we discussed as part of the admin session tomorrow is this. If you look at the training uh, program, is this notion of batch ingestion of content, right? And the way you access that feature is once you log in um, to the right vertical panel, right under administrative here, right? You have the option that says content administration. And under content administration, if I can blow it out here, um, you can actually gain access to a feature that's called batch import zip. Now, the way this thing works, right, and it's properly documented, but the way it works is, uh, it works in such a way that it expects the information that you're uploading to be organized in a certain format, right? That format, right, is, uh, in this case, it's referred to as a simple archive uh, format. I don't know if we, do we have a report for the dam, by the way? I didn't see it. Uh, in case people are wondering, the report has a tab for the dish dams as well, so you can easily see the files that have been entered as well and what is pending. So the report file has two tabs for the repository and, and the dams here, if you remember. Anyways, so it expects the data to be in, uh, in, in a certain format, right, a simple archive format. And if I were to open a sample, simple archive format, um, it is uh, organized like this. So this is data for 2018 that I batch ingested into this space. And you'll notice that everything that I'm adding is organized in this sort of, uh, this sort of structure. Right? For each item that I want to, in this case, I was wanting <coughs> to deposit a total of about 15 items. So each item has its own archive, right? So item one, item two, item three, item four. Uh, if you look at item one as an example, you notice that each item is associated with the bitstream that you wish to upload, and this makes sense, right? The PDF document itself. That's one thing. Um, and then this is just a, a, a it just by convention, the format expects you to also include uh, a contents file. It just lists the name of the file that is going to be associated with this object. And you'll notice in this case, it's just this PDF document. If I had a number of files that I wanted to associate to this object, I would have them listed here. But that's, that's fine for now. And then, I'm sure you're wondering, well, if, if you just have it, but where is the metadata? So there's this XML file that has to be created. Right? Um, and it's created in such a way that the contents of the file are encoded in, in, in Dublin Core. It doesn't have to make sense for now, uh, it's fine. Usually when you're using this method, you don't even have to uh, understand what Dublin Core is all about. But Dublin Core is nothing more than a metadata standard, right? Um, so you notice uh, familiar tags here like uh, language, right? Things like the abstract, right? Uh, things like sponsorship, those things that we are manually keying in. So each of these items is associated with, uh, uh, so each item is associated with a bit stream, right? Um, a plain text file with a list of files that should be uploaded uh, together with the item and the descriptive information that's encoded using uh, a Dublin Core metadata standard. Right? It's an international standard. It's all over actually. In your PDF uh, file, when you go to file properties, the things you see there, that's Dublin Core encoded metadata. But anyway, so once you do this, um, ideally you, you compress this into a single zip file, right? a single zip file, and then it is the zip file that you ideally upload. Now, I know it sounds all complicated and whatnot, but it turns out that in as much as this simple archive format can be created, you can easily, it's all patterns, right? You can easily create this manually. There's an easier way of doing this. Um, so, um, there's a terminal-based application that you can use on Windows and on Linux. And I think this is going to be the basis of this simple showcase, right? Maybe you'll be able to appreciate uh, 
how easy it is to deposit content if we do this. So, uh, the way that the, the terminal based application works is you feed it information um, in a, a CSV file, right? Rows and tables. And this CSV file will have column names. Uh, well, there'll be a column name for the file, the files you want to batch upload. A column name or column names associated with the different metadata elements for each of those files, right? And I'll showcase um, just an example of 2018 to illustrate how this is organized. Um, and hopefully, as I'm sh sh showcasing this, maybe I'll, I'll pause on things or sections of this talk where uh, I, I feel you you'll be able to best benefit. Um, what you notice with, from this comma-separated file is that. You can, you can actually put in place a system that will enable you collectively prepare metadata, right, and organize that metadata against the different files, um, and then easily batch upload uh, documents. As many as a thousand at any given point in time, right? But we'll do maybe just 16. We'll look at 2017, which we haven't done. Apologies, but any office is uh, taking a while here to, to open, but hopefully it should be able to open uh, soon. Uh, if you can open it. Hmm, I wonder as we're waiting here, say, uh, uh, tell me about the Catholic Church in Zambia. Let's see what that GPT is going to say here. Eh? Uh, forgot here. Okay. This is. Uh, now, normally, if I wanted to find out about the Catholic Church in Zambia, I probably would have go into the library or go online and I start reading, but ChatGPT provides me a very detailed description. I mean, obviously, uh, there's, there's issues to do with what they call explainable AI, right? There's no way of verifying whether this information is even accurate, right? Well, it doesn't give references. No, it doesn't. That's the thing. It's like Wikipedia in your Yes, although Wikipedia does give you references. Uh, yeah. I don't know why, why this is taking a while to open. Uh, okay, there we go. It's almost. Yeah. So ideally, the, the comma-separated file looks something uh, similar to what you are hopefully going to see on the screen right about now. And what you notice is hopefully there are portions of this document that are familiar to you, right? right. The file name is what you're uploading. You know, this, uh, look at the last thing after the last dot here to the right, author, right? Date issued, right? All those things you are keying in as part of the submission workflow. Mm -hmm. This description is uh, that, that, that abstract we agreed upon, the chunk of text we extract or we copy from uh, the, the reports at the bottom there. And then we have, uh, we have the sponsor, right? The language, the publisher, right? So, so using this information, I prepare this information like this, I'll run the terminal based uh, application and the application generates automatically this archive here. And then this archive is what is uploaded onto, um, onto um, uh, the repository. So um, I'm just going to quickly showcase, this is my workflow. Your workflows can be different. I'm going to quickly showcase a workflow of <coughs> depositing 2017 using batch, uh, this, this simple archive format batch ingestion uh, process to showcase that you can do this in less than maybe 10 minutes or something. So my workflow is such that I will, I will first of all, uh, identify the uh, location of what I need to upload. Right? So I'll pick, the, uh, I'll pick the BNNB report for 20, 2017, right? I'm in here. Um, and I will obviously go to my month, which is uh, November, right? Um, these are temporal files, I can delete these, right? <coughs> uh, 
And the process we've been going through is such that we first of all rename. So this is 2017, and I will take advantage of these things here just so I have the correct naming convention. So I'll come here and I'll say this is Chinsali 2017. This is November though. Chinsali, and then I'll just copy this and duplicate this. So Chinsali, I have Chipata. I have Choma. For the people that are going to be performing these admin tasks, uh, we have a detailed uh, uh, tutorial tomorrow where we will look at this and the batch metadata update. Uh, uh, this is Kawe. And then this is Kasama. This is Kitwe. Osaka, <coughs> maybe you can use the web interface to create uh, 2017 if it's not there and the reports folder as well. In the in the dam, right? This is Mansa. placed in a folder called uh, 2017 uh, 11.30 and then I have a folder called reports here and then I'm going to put these things I've renamed into a folder called reports <coughs> um, and then of course what, what I do myself is uh, uh, I will Go to 2017 here. Then go in reports. That's my reports, and because uh, I am uh, I'm too lazy like that, I will instead of manually uh, converting to PDF, I'll just run this uh, terminal command so that I convert all of these art here formatted files into PDF, and we're almost done actually here. So. Okay, so I've converted them to PDF, and then what I'll do is, I'm just following through the workflow we've been following through, says that I'm doing it uh, all at once here. I'll copy these and move them to the DAMS location, right? So I'll go to the JCTR BNNB, I'll go to the appropriate here, which is 2017, I'll go to reports. There's only one report from May here, I'll dump my 16 reports from November, right? And then they'll be synchronized. Once I'm done, so this is the part where I've moved these files to the dams. Now the next part is I wish to now um, upload this to the repository. Right? This is the part maybe that people are looking forward to, in case you want to follow through. Um, so for this, I will use this same structure here, right? where I'll need this file, simple archive format, SAF builder. Right? I'll come to 2017 reports. I'll dump this, I'll just rename this to 2017 because I'm working on 2017. And then I will open this 2017 file um, to help me f uh, kind of easily do these things. I will, I will just delete everything and just remain with the columns. Hopefully this will make sense soon. I just want to remain with the, this column, uh, column headers here for the data I'm going to be working with. Okay. <clears throat> Once I do this, what I now want to do is I want to 
um, automatically generate something similar to this. So for each of these files that I want to upload, these files here, these PDF files, there are a total of 14 there. For each of these 14 files, I want to generate corresponding information about the author, the date when that file was issued, the description, the abstract, the funder, right, the language, which is always going to be English, the publisher, right, JCTR, the link to uh, rights URL, the Creative Commons, right, uh, and the subjects, all right, and then um, yeah. So let's let's see if we can do this. Um, you know, close this 2018, and the way that I this is again this is me. You can do this in so many different ways, right? So imagine this is being done by JCTR. What you could do is you could say, for each BNNB, uh, this is a high, I suppose. You, for each file, you identify who the author is. You start typing, or copy pasting the content here, right? Let's say you're working on it's you working on 2017. You key in all the details for the 14 towns, right? There are 14 for 2017, at least in November. So you specify the author, which is JCTR, the date, this is November uh, 2017, right? So this is like 2017 hyphen 11 30 or something. And then the abstract, which would be, uh, unfortunately, you'd have to open all of those files, and then you copy the last strip, the text at the bottom, okay? Um, you do the same for sponsor and this. What I f found useful is because uh, in the past I've used spreadsheets uh, frequently, uh, I, I have found that life is a lot easier if I use, uh, if I use uh, a spreadsheet, right? So what I would do is uh, I've created some sort of template in here. So what I'll do is I'll, this can be done in Excel if you wish, it doesn't matter. What I'll do is um, I'll use Google Sheets and the already formulas that I've created in here. So all I do is I just change things relative to the month and year that I'm working on. So. Uh, let's say I w um, I'm working on 2017 here, I'll just duplicate the 2018 file, right? And rename it here. Again, this your workflow doesn't exactly have to be similar to mine. And then I'll delete the last two, the last couple of entries except for one, which I'll use just drag and drop formulas, right? Now, the way I'm doing this is the formulas in this spreadsheet uh, created in such a way they are all here as one, but they're created in such a way that they make reference to the file name, right? So what I, I would do then is I will just, these files I want to upload, I will list this, right? I'll copy this, 14 files, these PDF files only. Right? And then... That's in command? Yes, but you can copy them uh, even uh, normally, I guess. Yeah. Just quicker this way, and then once once I copy them like so, what I'll do then is I will just paste them here now, right? And you know I don't know if you've noticed here. Pay particular attention to columns A and and B here, right? If I undo here, you notice that previous it was Chinsali November 2018, but once I paste this thing has changed 2017, right? And so the formulas in here I've created in such a way that uh, the date looks at the how you've named this file. So this date has changed relative to this file, right? The only thing that uh, will have to be manually copied across is, uh, the is yeah, the abstract. Uh, these are static, right? The, f the funders, the language, the publisher, these are all static. The other bit which is dynamically generated is the title. Again, you notice it's a formula. So if I come here and I, and the subjects are also dynamically generated. If I come here because these are all formulas, I can just copy across this formula so that the information that I'm going to have for these other files are going to be relative to the other towns, so Chipata, Choma, Kabo, right? And then if I come here as well, and I, 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 I automatically generate the subjects, you notice that these subjects will be changing relative to, uh, to the file that I'm referring to, right? Uh, maybe the title will be the best one to use. If I, if I work with the title and I come up to here, you'll notice that this will, will change, right? And I'll have Chipata, Choma, Kabwe, and all that. Right, so I'm, I'm using this to automatically generate this information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, 
Um, and, and it, it depends on how you want to do this. You can either do this right within uh, Google Sheets, or you can do it using Microsoft Excel after you generate this thing, but maybe I'll use Google Sheets here, right? So I'll now open up, because unfortunately for now, uh, we, we haven't really figured out um, an optimal way of automatically extracting the text at the bottom, but you can, right? You can, you can easily extract that text if you want to figure out how to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just open all of these BNNB reports, and I'm opening them because I'm interested in that chunk of text for the uh, abstract. So I'll just open all of them. Yes, it will. Uh, if it doesn't, if you have time, uh, before you sleep, you can always watch the recording. We'll share this recording. <laughs> <laughs> it is always nice. <laughs> instead of instead of playing on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, similar to the areas you specialized in in computing, um, one of the very first things I'll teach you is um, how to identify patterns and, and if, where, where there's a pattern, you can automate things. Yeah. And if you think about what we've been doing, it's the same thing. Everything is the same, right? But anyway, so I'll go to the Chinsali bit, right, and copy this chunk of text here. This is what I'm interested in. Then I'll just go here and I'll paste that stuff there. I can close this. I'll go to Chipata, right? Of course, at this point, you, you'd have to do a little bit more here by way of verifying that, you know, this text would notice their errors. But for now, this is just purposes of this example, right? Shpata. Then I'll scroll down and uh, copy this for Choma. And then I will go for carbon. And whoever is, is going to be working on this, I'm sure if you reach out to the consultant who created the system that you used to generate these reports, yes. there could be a way of, instead of copying this from the PDF, I'm sure there could be a way of easily extracting this text as you are wanting to pick out this metadata, if that makes sense. So you may want to maybe reach out to the consultant and find out. So one share. <coughs> And then we have Osaka. Then we have uh, Mansa, and then <coughs> we have Monku. And I've noticed that for older ones, I guess you are using a different email address, right? For older ones, it was this, but that's fine. This is way, way back. This is almost five, six years ago or something. But consistency is always nice. But anyway, uh, and then you have uh, Ndola. Finally, you have uh, so is I worked with someone who who taught me that there's a difference between and now I see all of these things now. When I saw this, I was wondering, it's not a hyphen, it's an in dash, em dash. You know that there are different types of dashes, right? A hyphen, an en dash, and an em dash. 
And mm. so now, because of working with that person, I think I see the same things he was seeing, which is very sad sometimes, I think. <laughs> this is not very important now, is it? Okay, so, um, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll copy across these formulas now, right? This is the abstract uh, fine. I'll copy across the, the author and the dates. You notice if I just paste this formula, it automatically generate what I want. I'll do the same thing for uh, these details. And the details after the description, um, this is mostly static information except for the title, but these are all formulas. So I'll just copy this, right? And then starting from here, I will come up to here and then attempt to see if I can copy paste uh, up to Solway's. Just test the formula like that, and then boom. So I have now created uh, the metadata associated with 2017. I'm not sure if anyone was timing this, but that's fine. So in case you want to, comp usually it's nice to compare and say, is it better if I log into this space and then I go through that submission workflow one at a time for those 14 items? How long does it take you to process yeah. one or to process 14 uh, in comparison to this? Okay, so I'll copy this uh, across here. But uh, certainly not what I was looking at doing. Uh, okay. okay, so I've copied across this information, and what I'm just going to do now is just copy it in this uh, template file that I created that has these fields file, contributor, right? Date. Description. So this is the information I want to enter for the 14 items, and then I'll save this. And then what I'll do then now is I will I will create the package. If you remember, we started off by explaining this SAF uh, package, the simple archive format package. Um, so what I'll do now is I will come here. Right, I've already created this file here. Um, the application, the SAF builder, uh, is open source. All you do is you if you look up, you know, we can provide details on how to install this tomorrow during training. But for now, we'll just showcase exactly how this works. So the way it works is, uh, if, if you notice, if I just I don't want to run it without anything. But it, it expects certain certain flags, right? So you run it as a terminal command like this, but it expects certain flags. And the more important flags you're specifying is the file. In this case, it's a 2017 file. This file that you want to use to automatically generate that that archive, right? And then also the file is located in a particular directory in my case, so I'll change this to 2017. And then that's it, right? Now in case you say, you know, he was cheating, he already had those things in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes they do that, but it's a demo anyway. Uh, you notice there's no archive here. The moment I run this once, this, this um, application uh, finishes, right? When it completes running, this, the, the package and the zip files will be in this directory, right? So it's running, I mean, it, it's, it's running in quiet mode, which is why you can't see any output. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of output there, but very soon, hopefully, we should be able to, we should be able to see, uh, we should be able to see uh, a dot .zip file and a folder that will have subdirectories corresponding to each of those entries in that spreadsheet. The CSV file that I've just created. All right. It take a while here because it's you know it's going through file by file. So for all of these different uh, PDF documents here, it's going to uh, there we go. Uh, so it should be done. There we go. So we have the simple archive uh, format that has been created. And in case you're wondering, oh well, no, it's a different folder. I just clicked elsewhere. It says just now here modified, right? So if I go in here, I have these. 14 items. And indeed, if I check item number one, I will see that it's 2017, which is BNNP. Right? So there's, this, there's a corresponding zip file, hopefully somewhere at the bottom here. This is the, the file that you upload. Right? So if we go to the repository just to confirm here, you will notice that I will refresh here. We have a total of 558 items. Right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload 
um, I'm going to upload those 14 items so that we have slightly more than 558. Okay. So how you upload those items is you log in. You now have that archive. That archive can be manually created, actually, by the way, which is faster still than going to this space and then keying in that information. But it's also that it's much quicker when you organize the information in a spreadsheet and then you use the staff builder to build the archive for you. Right? Also, it's less error prone as well. So um, once I log in, I will go under uh, this administrative uh, section right, of, of the right uh, vertical menu uh, here. And then <coughs> where you have content administration, you contextualize this, you have quite a number of things here. You go to batch import, right? In parentheses, zip. Um, and then you have, um, you know, this, this, this page that will come up, uh, provides you with an option to choose which collection you want to deposit the zip file that has those 14 items. Mm -hmm. And I will choose uh, cost of living, uh, BNNB report, reports, where is BNNB reports here. And then I will browse the location of this zip file, this simple archive uh, formatted zip file here. We'll go to where it's located, and I'll just select the zip file, right? Open. In fact, it tells you here, upload simple archive format zip file. And then that's it. Um, I'll just upload, and it doesn't take long. Um, the only other issue to, to note here is when you use the simple archive format, right, you are bypassing the authorization state. And this makes sense because you only have access to this feature if you have admin privileges. Mm -hmm. So you're bypassing... Uh, the process where somebody has to log in and authorize, say this is fine. Um, and, and I think this makes sense because if you think about it, this sort of batch ingestion would, would be utilized when you're uploading things that you're certain about. A lot of files. Like in this case, we're going to be working with, uh, I don't know if you've already computed how many files you'll be working with. If you just look at the BNNB reports, right? Assuming that 16 is constant, it's 16 times. Uh, it's 16 times, times what, times 12, times 1999 to 2022. I don't know how many files we have here. So we're looking at thousands of files, right? Um, I don't know why this is taking slightly longer here, but uh, in essence, I mean, so this is a process that you go through. Hopefully, the connection is fine, and we should be able to see um, some, there we go. So upload successful, right, here. And indeed, if we go to, here where we had 58 and we refresh, we should have more items than 58. We now have 572. And the most recently added items are from the 2017. Uh, now the beauty with this sort of uh, approach is you can do the same thing when it comes to editing. And I deliberately, uh, or we have deliberately made a mistake so that we can use this as an example tomorrow. For the funder section, for, is it uh, BNNB reports before, I think, 2018 or something. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be uh, uh, Irish aid and joint country program, right? Yes. But what, I've, what we've done is we've deliberately made this mistake so that the funder details, uh, fact, in the type, um, are actually specified as just Irish aid. So tomorrow we'll see that we can use this same method to put everything in here which has Irish aid as a funder and needs to be corrected to Irish aid and <coughs> joint country program. So you just export the, the, the item metadata, you make the change and then you re-import and then everything is updated on the fly for you. Um, so there you go. I mean, I, I, I don't know, in my opinion, so uh, rather than, uh, I don't know how long it's taking you uh, or you, everybody else to upload uh, one year, but we've just taken, I think, about, I don't know if it was 30 minutes or something, maybe less than that, but, um, but anyway, so I thought I would mention that. Um, yeah, so before we also, by the way, before we transition to having the discussion on, uh, hopefully if you've organized the files we had asked for, uh, I wanted to show us something, right, that maybe you may be interested in, maybe you may not be interested in, uh, I don't know. But you will notice something when you are logged on and you have admin privileges. You will notice that there is um, a DC dot description field that is associated with provenance, right? Provenance is really tied to long term preservation of information, right? Um, authenticity of information. What you will notice is if we go to, let's say, uh, I'm trying to see if maybe we can go to 
a particular month that somebody worked in, in this collection, I'll check for uh, I guess I can check for subjects here. Um, you were working on which month? September. September. So we can use September as an example, right? So if, if we filter out subjects for just that collection, the collection we've been using, and we go to, let's say, September, right? 2022, for instance. Um, if we open up um, an example item here, right? What you will notice is that uh, if, if you view the full item metadata record, right? There are multiple files here, we need to fix this as well. If you, if you say show full item record, I don't know how I feel about those uh, smileys, maybe we must all oh, nest to remove them. I think we discussed that we we'll remove them, right? Mm -hmm. but, but if you look at the provenance details, right, you have a traceable record of what is happening, right? The person that approved, right? So the person that submitted this, was Victoria, right? We know when Victoria submitted this, right? Now usually in certain large organizations, if you're trying to check who was not working here, no, I submitted this two months ago, it was not approved, right? <laughs> but you can do this also. So the person who submitted this is Victoria, right? This was approved by Elijah, right? We know when it was approved. So it was submitted uh, at 1352, right? On the 1st of February. It was approved on the 1st of February at 1928, right? Um, yeah, and then it was made available because the workflow is you submit, somebody approves, and then it's made publicly available. Uh, that doesn't happen at the same time. So uh, you may or may not uh, wish to have access to this, but the key thing here is you only get to see this when you're logged on, right? Users, the general public are not interested in this provenance information. This is internal information security reasons and all. And incidentally, uh, this is what they call administrative, right, metadata. It's not descriptive. It doesn't help anyone by way of searching. The person who's searching for content, you don't want to search for who's, who submitted, who approved this, right? Anyway, uh, so I don't know if there are any thoughts or questions about this, but uh, maybe we can, we can pause and uh, uh, I know people are going to be busy in the afternoon. I would want for us to maybe make maximum use of this session. Uh, and my view is that we can uh, hopefully just quickly decide on uh, maybe three, four, maybe five additional categories. I think we're all tired of uploading the BNMD reports. We want to to look at other outputs, I think. That's that's my suggestion. I don't know if we managed to find, uh, I know I've spoken to Father Grant about possibility of maybe activity reports if possible, or any other output to do with what faith and justice does, but there's also discussions centered around uh, 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 those specific town, I don't know if it's called uh, the, the report that's, uh, yeah, there's that. There are also data sets associated with the BNNB. Uh, hopefully there could be things that uh, PDE does as well that maybe, I mean, it doesn't have to be something that we need to upload to the repository, but maybe something we need to upload to dams if that makes sense, because the volunteer is going to be working on dams and the repositories. It, and I think they'll be much more effective at what they do if they know beforehand like how they are going to be working for the different types of files, if that makes sense. I don't know, so we'll throw that to you and maybe you have thoughts or suggestions on how we can proceed with that. If not, there's plenty to go around here. If you notice, we have up to 1999. Um, yeah, I think it would be good if we also look at Yes. 